Hey, welcome again, guys. I never quite know how to address you, um, except for thanks for watching. You must be bored of these videos already, but, oh, I hope they help a little bit. And uh, I do respect your time and your motivation in checking in and seeing what additionally you might be able to glean from this info. Um, the topic of this uh, little clip is called the reaction quotient, Q. It's common in equilibrium for when you're not really at equilibrium or you're not sure if you're at equilibrium or not. Um, what we do is we enter our amounts of reactants and products into an expression exactly the same as the law of mass action equilibrium constant expression. But we know for sure, or maybe we're just curious to know if we really are at equilibrium or not. Um, if Q comes out, in our calculation to be equal to our known constant for that temperature, then we know that we are accidentally, coincidentally, mm, by chance, at equilibrium. But for the most part, there's no reason why we have to um, put certain amounts of A and certain amounts of B or whatever into, an, into a mixture, and they should not necessarily be at equilibrium. So perhaps we're being lazy, perhaps we're being curious, perhaps we're being... Um, instructive when we say let's just take a random amount or a certain amount of A and put it in a container or B and put it in a container or both and put them in a container and see what happens. Well check out this one down here. If I had only A, A is the, are they blue dots? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, two, four, can I count? Two, four, six, eight, ten. Yeah, <laughs> oh yeah, duh, ten. So I have ten, um, ten blue dots and uh, no red dots. So the reaction quotient in this case, if my Q is products in the numerator and reactants in the denominator, just like we've always done with the equilibrium constant expression. Hey, let me scroll down here for a second just to make sure we're all on the same page. <laughs> so if I write a general equation A reacts with B to give C and D, then I have uh, coefficients balancing J or K or L or M, and the J and the K and the L and the M are exponents. And the products, oh, geez, are you kidding me? Oh, that's embarrassing. I made a mistake. I got to go change it. I can't sleep at night if I don't. Be right back. Okay, I fixed my boo-boo. Because the products go on the upstairs to the L to the M, the reactants in the downstairs. And I can write uh, concentration Q or pressure Q. Usually we don't distinguish just because, um, hang on, let me adjust this, sorry. Usually we don't distinguish because um, we know we're going to compare um, Q to K regardless. And so we just want to see what the value comes out to. If I'm making a concentration Q, I'll check it with a concentration constant that describes the balance of the equilibrium. In any case, all right, let's uh, move back up to our previous slide. So as I was saying, mm, Let's see, if I have um, 10 blue ones and no red ones, that, re that reaction quotient would be zero of these and 10 of these. But of course I'm not at equilibrium. This says that the A's like to make the B's and the B's like to make the A's. They go back and forth like that. So if I had a mixture of only 10 units of A, then they would right away start to create some of the B and they would, the Q would rise from zero gradually, incrementally, smoothly, on up the curve. At this point, uh, um, Q is, a ha is 0.5. At this point, Q is 1. So I suppose that would be, what, 5 red and 5 blue. And then finally, when I get up to here, Q has reached, um, has created 6 red and 4 blue are left. And uh, I've reached the place where the constant describes, the constant K describes a uh, a happy balance of forwards and a backwards. Perhaps the blue ones are still creating red and the red are still creating blue, but overall it looks like no changes. It's hard to imagine which is 10 particles, but maybe we're really talking 10 quadrillion particles. Similarly, over here, if I had, um, if I had started with, um, right, if I had started with um, nine Bs, red ones, and one a, blue one, 
Well, that's not a comfortable mixture either. That's not uh, an equilibrium as described by the equilibrium constant. The Q comes out to 9, and that's too big. That means that's too big or that's too small. So if this is too big and or this is too small, then the reaction will tend backwards. Uh, B will tend to make more A, and uh, the blue, I'm sorry, the red will tend to make more blue until the constant falls from 9. Oops. Eh. This little picture doesn't really match this over here, but that's all right. Imagine this is a little bit higher up on the curve. But that 9 will shrink 8.9, 8.8, 8.7, blah, 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 3, 3 2.9, 2.8, 2.7, and everything in between until that constant Q, I'm sorry, the Q, the quotient, falls down to equal the constant at 1.45 or 1.5 if you round it. Hmm, I feel so weird talking to a machine because I'm really used to watching people's faces and see if you're understanding or scrunching your eyebrows. You have good questions. I wish I could interact with you here. But alas, I can't. So let's try an example. Let's say, for the sake of illustration, there's a reaction. I have uh, iodine molecule gaseous, chlorine molecule gaseous and in equilibrium with two ICL gaseous molecules. And I just throw in a random, I call it random, but I measured it, obviously, or how would I know what it is, but um, I wasn't uh, for sure that it would be at an equilibrium. As a matter of fact, I'm pretty sure it's not, unless it's a huge coincidence, or they've pre-calculated pre something. In any case, the 0.335, that goes in the upstairs, and the squared, that's the two right there, and the 0.114 atmospheres and the 0.102. And again, this is written exactly like K, except now we're not at equilibrium. We're curious if we are at equilibrium. And when I do the math, the constant comes out to 10. So I see, indeed, we are not at equilibrium. 10 is much smaller than 81.9. So if this is small, this is small and or this is big. This is small and or this is big. This is small and or this is big. And if this is small and or this is big, these will move toward the right and form more of this. This 10.8 going to 10.9, 11, 11.1, 11 11.15, 11 et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, all the way up to 81.9. Since Q is smaller than K, the forward reaction will predominate. We'll get a lot of that and a little backwards. Of course, as clo the closer and closer this 10 grows larger, this number goes larger, these numbers go smaller up to 81.9. The closer this gets to this, and the more reverse reaction picks up, till eventually when I get exactly Q equal to K, then my forwards and backwards rates become equal once again. This equilibrium stuff is a crazy idea, very abstract. Here's a summary of what will happen to the reaction in the beginning. As Q tries to achieve the same value as K, I don't think you should memorize this. As a matter of fact, you shouldn't remember it. It's in the book. It's in every book I, I've ever seen. But don't remember it. It's much better to do the Q calculation and ask yourself, what does it mean? If Q is larger than K, there's too much product. If Q is smaller than K, there's too much reactant. In the rare case, Q could be equal to K, but that probably means you've calculated something ahead of time and mixed it up on purpose. Here's another equilibrium. Two gaseous molecules and equilibrium with two other gaseous molecules. So I suppose since there's two gas molecules here and two gas molecules here, the delta N would be zero and QP equals QC. Interesting. So at 500 degrees, I'm talking a constant K of about 100, 102. So what if I did a relatively random, questionably, probably not an equilibrium mixture, one molar this, one molar this, 11 molar this, 12 molar this. Plug in the numbers, 11 and 12 go on the upstairs, 1 and 1 go in the downstairs, 132. So Q is 132. What did we say this constant with the K was? Oh, it's, oh, I see. So if the constant is smaller than Q, just like in the previous, or one of our previous examples, the, yeah, these, this is too big, a little bit too big, so it'll want to go back this way and the 12 and the 11 will decrease a little bit, and the 1 and the 1 will also increase a little bit. At this point, we're not ready to, to go into the details of how we can calculate, or maybe actually in a few minutes I'll... Ooh, good.
goodness gracious, time flies. If I have time, I'll go over uh, an extension below. Uh, comparing this to K, we see that, yeah, it's a bit too large, and so uh, the reaction will proceed to the left in reverse, uh, forcing Q to shrink. This is too big, this is too big, and or this is too small. Another way to write it is this equilibrium will be, well, this e mixture is not yet at equilibrium because I have too much of this and I don't want to go backwards more than forwards. Yeah, a little bit of forwards goes, but uh, mostly we have the backwards reaction predominating so that I make more of this and a little bit less of that. Let's look at one more example. Here's another random mixture of A2 and B2 and some two ABs. Oh, I shouldn't say that. I'll say some A2 and some B2. Count nine particles here. I count uh, eight particles here. And I count five particles of AB. That too is indeed important, of course, if you're thinking about a balanced equilibrium mixture. But I'm not talking about that balanced mixture yet. I'm just looking at a random mixture. And I happen to know from something, previous experiment, that this constant is 10. So I'm wondering, Am I yet at equilibrium? I have nine of these, I have eight of these, I have five of these. I bet we're not at equilibrium. I'm going to put this in the upstairs of my Q quotient. I'm going to put this in the downstairs, both these in the downstairs. There's a two there. I'm pretty sure I know what that means. Something like this. So the constant is equal to this, which is also equal to this, but I'm only I'm not yet at equilibrium. Be oh, I told you the answer. Rats. So 5 squared is 25. 9 times 8. So that gives you 0.347 as compared to my constant was 10. So that means that means this is too small. That means this is too small and or this is too big. And this is too small and or this too is too big. So if it's uh, too small on the product side, the reaction goes forward. And as the reaction goes forward, I will uh, form more product and that uh, 0.347 will grow larger and larger and larger and larger until it equals 10. Oh, let's see how much time do I have. I better call it on that. Maybe I'll put another as an extension on this, but uh, maybe I'll put it into a separate short video. Thanks for watching, guys. Ah, have a cup of coffee.